Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another sit rep episode here on Brick Mania TV. We're down in what I think we'll just call the BKM studio now. Is that what we're calling? Yeah, the studio. It's a meeting room, studio, library. It's a jack of all trades. It is. Kind of like, kind of like all of us here at, at Brick Mania. We wear many hats. Many hats. Not literally. Sometimes. Sometimes literally. literally. <laughs> yes, so uh, as you guys know, it is it is not Monday, but we had our restocks done once again, and so we thought, why sit on our restocks all weekend long when we can put them up and make them available? So they are there, uh, including one that I think a lot of people will notice uh, because we originally oh, man. were going to retire it, and then oh, the man. outcry was no. was very apparent, and so we have unretired it. Unretired. The Hollywood add-on pack is back. Oh, so man. is the Easy Eight. And so if you want to build this decked out, one of our most in-demand kits, mm -hmm. pretty much of all time, I'd say. Well, look at it. Yeah, yeah right. It's like, awesome. it's one of those ones that blurs the line between model and Lego. Yeah. You know, because it's just. You're saying Lego's not model? So detailed. Oh, no. Oh. Right. No. Sorry. It's a model, but it's uh, just clearly decked out with about as much detail as you can get on this. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff going on yeah. there. It looks, it looks like a Sherman has been in country, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even if you're not like a huge Fury fan, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, I guess, but you know, right. it just looks like looks like there's a lot going on. No, and awesome. and uh, I w was lucky enough to see the actual one that they used for the movie when we were at the That's Tank right. Museum. So that was really cool to see that. And then even just have Dan talking about it and um, Josh from Beyond the Brick and it's cool to, that's cool. So it's cool to see this back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Hollywood add-on pack, unretired and back. Uh, hopefully we'll keep restocking it through this year. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't wait on it though. I'd scoop it up when you have the chance. Okay. So moving on from there, I know the VAB has been online for a minute now. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just gonna put that back over there. Uh, but there are still quite a few of them left, so I figured I'd touch on that because nice. I love this thing because of its price point and playability. One of my favorite figures. It's just a really, yeah. really unique figure from. I don't know. It's cool seeing those mishmash of gear and, and UN stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to flip it. Oh yeah, more accurate if it's tipped over. Right? Tipped over and covered in zombies. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how it's supposed to look. Always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this thing is awesome. Essential for any modern mocks where the UN has got involved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Peacekeepers. Very cool. Um, okay, so then also we have, yes, we have the pack howitzer, which we don't have a built one of those at the GHQ. We Not need to do that. Yet. So we've had this for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Good staple. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love those artillery pieces because literally you add some figures in a little terrain and boom, you get a mock. Uh, and then we also have the Napoleon gun is back as well. Don't forget we also have the Confederate soldiers and Union soldiers sticker pack. Mm -hmm. So if you want to build yourself a little Civil War diorama, now you have all the there assets you, you need to do so. And this is another one where it's like, don't just buy one. You know, what, what, what are you going to do with one cannon? Mm, at least. More than one. Oh, I thought we were going to get a hard number there. Mm -mm. No, you're not going to tell us how many Napoleon guns we need? Buy them all. <laughs> you need every Napoleon gun. Or you will, your mission will not be successful. Okay, and then we've got a whole bunch of figures. So talk to me a little bit about the uh, Viet Cong Gorillas. Because they have been gone for quite yeah, some time. Yeah, so this is, this is an older figure. Um, but I believe it was my first time getting that um, sort of Soviet era ammo pouches. Mm -hmm creating artwork for that and printing them on a minifigure. Um, so that turned, I was pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I, yeah, um, this is a nice throwback figure. Um, good for filling up your Vietnam War dioramas. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like those throwback figures. Uh, and to be totally honest, with this perfect caliber uh, M16, which is also back, uh, you know, might have might have picked it up and captured M16. Yeah, a captured M16. Uh, would they even want to use the M16 though? I don't know. I just they probably preferred that. Whatever. I think jammed up a lot apparently. <laughs> fair, uh, fair enough. Well, the the perfect calibers won't jam on you. They'll just look guaranteed awesome. to never jam. Guaranteed and no background check, right? No background no. check. You can scoop up your M16 and don't even have to bat an eye. Yes. Okay. So we we have. Uh, let's just keep with the with the Vietnam stuff. Oh, look sure. at these helmets here. Nice uh, mix pattern. pattern. Mm -hmm. um, are these both the same ones? Oh, there's the Born to Kill. Yes. So that's based off of the uh, actual photograph. Um, there's like a famous, I think, movie cover with it on the side of the helmet, but the actual photograph had it on the front of the helmet. Really? So I based it off that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, maybe there are more than one Born to Kill helmet. You know, they, the soldiers would kind of write various messages on their helmet covers because they had a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. 
tell Cynthia I say hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Born to kill. Born to kill. You know, they're, they're equally cool. Sweet. All right, so jumping back to the Second World War then. Uh, the Perfect Caliber Car 98 is back. We have a uh, Ooh, well, U.S. Army rifleman coming in. Another, another captured weapon. There we go, yeah. Captured Could Car 98. Could have put it in the Panzer Commander's hand, I guess, but I didn't. Oh, well. So, yes, both of those are back. Uh, we were able to make a couple of extras of the Car 98s, Ooh. so there's a pretty good supply on there, but if it's anything like last time, don't wait on those mm -hmm. because they go fast, and we only have so much printing capability. So, but they do look just so awesome. Yeah, and it's a, it's a it's a really great price point. I guess the previously the, your best option for added detail would have been the overmolded versions, mm -hmm. which are really awesome in their own right. Um, but this is kind of just a different avenue that um, we're really enjoying put um, creating, and uh, yeah, it's just bringing a different level of detail to to your diorama. So. Yeah, very very cool. Great for photography. I mean, there's there's just a ton of uses for them. Mm -hmm. So that is awesome. And then uh, this. So is this what, what Panzer Panzer Commander is that the V two? No, uh, Panzer. Yes. yes, Panzer Commander V two. That is the uh, uh, World War Two U S rifleman, and then the World War Two U S tanker. Mm -hmm. All of those figures now back online on BrickMedia.com. So well, you know what would go really cool. well with uh, all this World War Two stuff? More World War Two stuff. <gasps> I mean, like this Battle of Britain stuff. So you guys know the bundle was available for pre-order, but now the official release date will actually be next Thursday, but we're doing a sit rep, so we're bringing everything to you. Um, so yeah, so this is the BF-109E. Yes. With some nice custom printing on the side. Mm -hmm. Love that piece. Yeah. That's, I think, Cody's favorite piece is what he claims. I don't oh. know if it still is. Wow. Used to Cody's mean, favorite piece. I think, yeah, I've asked him in the past. It might have changed since then, but. Pick this up for that reason alone. <laughs> That's the bullet point on the bottom of the box. Is yeah, Cody's, no includes Cody's favorite piece. That's the kind of information we need in our product does descriptions. He, yeah, does he like the left side or right side better? That's the question. Mm, we gotta get him in here. Maybe in next week's designer's desk. It's the real question here. When he here. sits down and talks about it, he'll be like, Actually, this is my favorite piece, and then we'll both look like fools. Exactly. <laughs> but this more, is awesome. More like fools. So then the, the Spitfire Mark I, Chris, he called me out. I called it the MK1 last time because I was reading off my MK. thing, which is, MK. which is dumb. But it's okay. Got it right this time, Chris. <laughs> so both those are back. Do you want to go over these figures real quick? I know we'll do the designer's desk on them, but they're both, they're both sure, new, sure. if I yeah. remember. Yep. Yeah. Um, it was cool researching, I'll start with the British guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it was fun researching this guy. Um, we opted for um, the goggles and oxygen mask on this guy. Uh, I had a, I had a um, previous pilot that we thought might have worked, but as we were digging in more into it, there's so many generations of oxygen masks and goggle covers from mm -hmm. like the beginning to the end of the war that although at a glance they might look the same, uh, this is a completely new version with the uh, correct goggles and correct oxygen mask. Very, very cool. Um, movie, um, the movie Dunkirk has, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you look at Tom Hardy, he's wearing that same configuration. Oh, cool. So, that's cool. Tom Hardy's a badass, that's yeah, awesome. Um, and then what do we have here? This is the German guy, a uh, brand new uh, life vest for this one. Um, these they're really interesting like life vests. They kind of look a uh, there's this oxygen or whatever compressed yeah compressed um, gas that they use to inflate that when they hit the water. Okay. Um, Is it a pull cord kind of thing? I think so, or maybe it's just like a turn turn okay. up. I'm not, I'm not I'm not positive on that. But apparently it wasn't very popular among pilots, especially if you're flying. You know, you're flying over water. Obviously, is what it's designed for, but. Um, when you get into combat, there's lots of shrapnel, uh, and these inflatable ones, a lot of them had one singular membrane, so if you took one little piece of shrapnel, oh, no. it's not really a life vest anymore. <laughs> so, they, you know, um, even though the Kapok life vests were older, they actually prefer, or some of them were older, um, they preferred those. Hmm. That is interesting. Yeah, that would be pretty useless to have it goes from a life vest to a fashion statement like that. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. Uh, and then we also have the micro brick battle Stuka. Which I think these wings are tilted a little bit extreme, but extreme, extreme Stuka. This thing's awesome. We're gonna have more aircraft coming out. Remember, uh, Micro Brick Battle Version Three of the Rulebook uh, contains the rules for for air to ground combat, um, so you can actually utilize some of these while you're playing. Uh, and the nice thing is too is once you, once you pick up one or, or a couple of them, you can, you know, use your own parts inventory to recreate more yeah, of bigger them. battle. You know? Yeah, right. So so that's awesome. 
um, and that was all included in the Battle of Britain bundle, but now they are avail available individually. And then finally, coming up on Thursday as well, we have some sticker pack, World War II Canadian Infantry. Um, obviously, uh, almost identical to the British in their uniform. Um, there's some slightly different materials, slightly different manufacturing processes, but uh, very, very similar to the British guy. There's, there's updated um, pattern 1907, I believe, uh, web gear for, um, not web gear, that's the US stuff. It's pattern 1907 uh, gear for the uh, British guys, and that's in that historically accurate, kind of like all of Blanco KG3, I think is the, uh, official colorway of that. So usually, usually um, and I made this, totally made this mistake uh, early on, um, often depicting British guys in their in like light tan gear. That's how they got that, the, their ammo pouches out of the factory, but uh, in the field they'd actually um, apply this kind of paste to stuff to them to make them olive color like this. So uh, that's the correct color on that. And there's some slightly updated artwork um, on that gear as well. So, and then some few other um, Easter eggs in this pack as well. So, really fun little pack to put together. Very, very cool. Guy knows his stuff. He does his research. Um, okay, sweet. So, a couple of other things to go over. One, coming up this weekend. Hopefully this weekend. Okay, within the next few days, we are going to announce the relaunch of our mock contest because we finally figured out the format that we want to do them in. And so, we will let you know what the theme is, what the prize levels are and a whole bunch of other details so stay tuned for that video uh, coming up soon and then also if you guys noticed on the website we have a new clearance section yeah so we have a bunch of stuff in there that is now permanently marked down uh, and we got the go ahead from Dan too to where you can now when we have promo promotions in the future provided there's still anything in the clearance section uh, you can combine those Ooh, so they will be permanently marked down crazy saving though. right so you'll be able to seriously save uh, so I know there's not exactly a high quantity of anything that's sitting in there, but the kits that are in there are really, really mm -hmm. cool. So make sure to take advantage of that. Um, other than that, stay tuned for more World War Brick updates. And I yeah. think that's all we got. Right on. Cool. Thanks for watching.